Welcome back to the Ed Morrissey Show podcast edition. You just saw him on the screen. We talk every Tuesday with the prince of Twitter, the regent of redstate.com, Andrew Malcolm, at A.H. Malcolm on the Twitters is Andrew. I've been gone for a week. I've been gold bricking out here uh, and in Central Texas. And so I... I, I am tabula rasa, man. I don't know what's going on for last week. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> you know, I saw I saw uh, a piece. I forget where it was, but that uh, more people are tuning out of the news because it's so depressing and bad all the time. Yeah, that's the reason why we do these. So people people will tune into the news because we're cheery. Yeah. Oh, by golly, we have jokes. We even got jokes and all that kind of fun stuff. And the world's <laughs> coming to an end. And we, we feel great. I don't know about you, but we feel great. Uh, yeah, live from Ed Morrissey's hot tub. It's hot air. <laughs> it's hot water on hot air. Hot water on hot air. I like that. I like that. Yes, I do have a hot tub now. Um, <laughs> so I like that idea. Um I don't know if I could get anybody to sell that. And if I, if I, if the, if it was me sitting in a hot tub, I think what was that line <laughs> by Samuel Goldwyn is that uh, if people don't want to show up, uh, they, yeah, they all, you see, in robes. <laughs> if people don't want to show up, you can't stop them. Yeah. Yeah. That would certainly be true of anything with me in a, um, in a hot tub. Uh, so maybe not the best of uh, ideas uh, that I have just come well, up. We could, we could have guests that, Celebrity guests in the hot tub. Yeah, I mean, if Jerry Seinfeld can drive around in a car and interview people, you can sit in your hot tub and interview people. Well, that's certainly true. That's certainly true. Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't Jerry. Was it, was it James Corden? Anyway, whoever it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Comedians in cars. Right. Yeah. That's oh, that was Jerry Seinfeld. Comedians in cars. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld, comedians. And, and then Robert. James Corden did singing in Cars or something. That yeah. was it, yeah. Like car karaoke, I think he did, right? I don't know. I, well, at I, any rate. At any okay, rate, so here we are <laughs> on a new week, and it's got a blank slate, uh, unlike most weeks when he's full of it. <laughs> I don't think it works either. That's, that, that's not a good slogan. <laughs> when, he, when, when his slate is full. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. And so, well, Ed, you didn't miss anything yet. There was uh there was no new balloon. Uh the war ended in Ukraine. Um I don't know what to tell you. There's nothing happening. Well, yeah. <laughs> nothing new happened anyway. Um apparently Donald Trump started uh telling people that uh he was going to get arrested tomorrow. Um and uh nobody nobody apparently has heard anything else other than what Donald Trump and his and his legal team are leaking? Uh, there has been calls for protests. If Donald Trump gets arrested, you know, once people go out in the streets and protest, yeah, you uh, know, he he said he said he was going to get arrested. Oh, I guess today is Tuesday. We're taping Monday, but uh, if if he hadn't said that, which appears to be stoking up or at least it stokes up memories of January 6th in some people's heads. Right. Uh, if he hadn't said that, the sympathy factor for Donald Trump would be over the moon. Uh, it is anyway. There's a lot of people, even people who are not Trump fans, who think that going after your predecessor um, and possible competitor in the next election uh, is really sort of banana republic. I mean, this is what they're doing yeah. in Pakistan right now. They're trying to arrest the prime minister, and he called for protests, and the protesters surrounded his house, and the cops couldn't get to him. It, it's it's so banana. I, I don't I don't understand why they're doing this. They're making him into a martyr. It, it, two in, in two uh, what do you call it? Impeachments weren't enough. Uh, it's they're just obsessed with this man yeah you know to to clarify of course this is the state of it's not even the state of new york it's the manhattan da's office so it's not the biden administration this is from alvin bragg you know in the manhattan da's office who's going to go after donald trump on this really stupid legal theory that he committed a felony by paying off uh stormy daniels over an alleged affair right 
And this, by the way, this is a case that the feds refused to prosecute. Right. Well, in part because they got burned when they tried prosecuting John Edwards for the exact same thing. <laughs> Didn't work. Yeah. Jury didn't buy it. And the reason why is that you can't prove, not even beyond a normal doubt, let alone a reasonable doubt, that the intent of this wasn't to keep his wife from finding out about this. You know, Melania, <laughs> supposedly this happened when Melania was pregnant. And so she probably wouldn't have taken it very well <laughs> to find out that he'd been sleeping with a, uh, you know, with a porn star. And again, this is all alleged because Trump denies that he had the affair. Stormy Daniels claims he, that they did. And that's the reason why she was paid off, which, sent, which actually kind of makes sense to me. But, you know, I'm, you know I, I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, but I mean, this isn't really a criminal issue. It, besides which has gone past the state, you know, the, the statute of limitations. Alvin Bragg's main witness to this is going to be Michael Cohen, who, by the way, is a convicted <laughs> perjured three got a three year sentence for lying to Congress. So that's a, I, I mean, clearly this is a political, it's a political attack and it's stupid because if you just left it alone, you could use just the fact that he did the payoff as a political attack on him. Now you're turning the guy into something of a victim. <laughs> of weaponized government and you know the, you know chris rock had something funny to say about this yeah, apparently he was at the kennedy center either last night or night before last accepting an award and there were democratic lawmakers there he apparently addressed them by saying are you stupid <laughs> you're going <laughs> to arrest trump over this you're going to guarantee he's going to get reelected." um <laughs> and you know there's something to that because like you said i think people really react to the fact that this is going to be, this is really a banana republic move. Uh, yeah. And it's over something super trivial and really outside of the, outside of the, uh, you know, the outside of what the Manhattan DA really should be working on, which is Ron DeSantis' uh, response. You know, we're re recording this on Monday. This was just a couple hours ago. Ron DeSantis got up and didn't really defend Trump. Actually, he had something kind of funny to say about Trump like, saying, Did you see this, by the way? Did you see no. the, uh, this? <laughs> <laughs> got up and says you know i i don't really know how this works you pay hush money to a porn star over an alleged affair but <laughs> so you know he but he said you know this is this is a this is clearly a politicized prosecution and alvin bragg is a soros da who is spending most of his time taking actual felonies and and bargaining them down to misdemeanors rather than taking a misdemeanor and trying to upcharge it to a felony um and it's ordinary New Yorkers and it's ordinary Americans who are victimized by prosecutors like this. Um, and that's the reason why, you know, we need to get rid of them. And I'm the, by the way, I'm the only governor that actually ever got rid of a Soros day. Um, so, you know, very smart, very astute, um, very strategically wise comment. Of course, Trump's are, are not at all happy with DeSantis over this, but, um, but he's right. I mean, this is this is basically proving the case that Republicans have been making up for a while is that Democrats have really weaponized the the levers of government to go after their political opponents. And here's Alvin Bragg basically almost, you know, almost bragging about the fact that he's, you know, pun not actually intended, but it works pretty well. Bragg is bragging about yeah. um, about trying to take down Trump. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all. It's outrageous, and you're absolutely right. What it does is it gins up the sympathy factor for for uh, Trump. Yep. I don't know if it's going to reelect him, but uh, he he's still he persists in hurting himself as he's always done since he became president, um, screwing up his own agenda by going off on tangents and feeling he has to punch back on everything, you know. Uh, a lot of people I've talked with, you know, I said, you know, if he just disciplined his mouth, um, he would have been reelected overwhelmingly over a guy who confuses Iowa with Ohio. I mean, it, it's yeah, it's it's insane. We're going through a, a very strange and disconcerting moment here in in our country's history. Yeah, I agree, uh, but you know, I also. I also think that this is something that we don't need 
protests in the streets over because first off, it's probably no, no. But secondly, if you're inclined to go thundering into the streets on Trump's behalf, just remember that <laughs> Trump still hasn't spent a dime of his money defending the people from the January 6th protests. <laughs> Yeah. Not a single dime. So bear that in mind if you're thinking about going out into the street and protesting on Trump's behalf. Um, uh, not a great track record there. All right. Um, so I did catch up to that story. And I, I actually think that nobody, I, I don't think that there's actually an indictment that's coming down this week. First off, they're still talking to at least one witness. Um, and secondly, I, I just still think that a grand jury is going to have a tough time issuing an indictment over something that's arguably past the statute of limitations shouldn't be a felony. Now you can get a, pro a good prosecutor can get a, a grand jury to indict a ham sandwich or so the saying goes. So maybe, th maybe they're going to do that, but I almost kind of wonder, and I'm going to run this one by you. I almost kind of wonder whether Bragg brought this case just so that the grand jury can shoot it down and he can finally say, look, it wasn't just, it wasn't just me. The grand jury thought this was a loser too because he got yeah. a lot of hot water for dropping an investigation into this a couple of years ago once he, when he first got elected and i'm wondering if this isn't his way of just rinsing rinsing himself from that uh, from that initial yeah, isn't, it, isn't it it's it's something that so many people in public life are doing things for the appearances yeah uh, of it not not for the not for the substance of it uh, and, you know, he could be wanting to prove the Soros that, well, I earned your money, I embarrassed him, but this isn't going anywhere legally. Yeah. Yeah. Which raises all sorts of other questions. If he's doing it to impress George Soros, um, you know, Soros sunk a lot of money into Bragg's campaign. According to the Daily Mail, it was close to a million dollars. And um, so, yeah, it's very possible that that's the case. Can you can you imagine having so much money that you can throw it away on things like this I, I no but you know if if george soros would like me to understand his, <laughs> his motivations a little bit better um you know george just uh, drop me a line i'll tell you how to wire the money and and yeah. i'll put that oh, absolutely. absolutely and then i'll feel much more sympathetic towards you george <laughs> <laughs> And, Ed and is cut just my, and cut my Ed pal is, Andrew in it. Ed is just uh, s uh, spinning out hot air, folks. Cut my friend Andrew in on it while you're at it, because he'd yeah. like to know that too. <laughs> yeah, you remember uh, that the closing uh, bits in uh, Life of Brian, where uh, where the uh, the guy comes up to save Jesus Christ. They're all up on the cross. And he said, is there a Jesus Christ here? And one man yells, I'm Jesus Christ, and so's my wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually think it was Brian. I think he was calling, is there a Brian here? And everybody, oh. it, was like a, it was like a reverse I am Spartacus. Everybody was Brian. Yeah. 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 That is a great scene, by the way. The, the other scene is, you know, about the people who were particular about where they were being crucified. <laughs> <laughs> one of his one of his uh, Monty Python colleagues uh, complained that uh, jokingly later, as they always did, that uh, this was done in Tunisia apparently, yes. and and it was done at dawn and it was very cold, and uh, uh, John Cleese was late, and he came in not the uh, prescribed uniform for the actors. He came all wrapped up and swaddled. <laughs> So, so he was the only one who was comfortable. He was good with hanging up on the cross for a while. Everybody else was freezing. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, I always did think that Cleese was the smart one. So, <laughs> <laughs> did you ever see his um, his um, what do you call it at a funeral? His um, requiem for uh, for uh, Brian uh, Chapman. No, I I never did. I don't think oh, I ever. Oh, geez, you gotta go to it. It's 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 the funniest thing where he gets up to honor their fallen colleague. I guess it was AIDS, but it, to saying that that uh, you know a lot of people get up for a funeral like this and they say, 
it's a shame he was taken far too early. He had a brilliant mind. He was a wonderful colleague, hilarious man, contributed to the team, a good, Amer a good um, British citizen. Um, and uh, But I'm here today to say good riddance. <laughs> I think I remember something about. I never, I never yeah, saw. It was, it was, the, it was the it, funniest yeah. contra thing, and of course everybody's laughing their heads off because Chapman would have wanted him to do something a bit like that. It was hilarious, yep. kind of, but it was so well done, and everyone in the audience was obviously moving along, and he's the good risen, the the cheap bastard, blah 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Oh man, they had some great stuff. All right, moving on. I want to I want to talk to you about something else in the media here. Um, first off, I think that the you know, the the Trump indictment thing is a media story too because the media is jumping all over this. Like the leak came from Alvin Bragg's office. It's pretty clear that the leak came from Trump Trump's attorneys. I mean, they're trying to stir something up, and it still might come to pass. But um, but I don't know that it's going to be tomorrow. If it is fine we'll deal with it but it's um i i don't know my my guess is I, i'm a little skeptical about this one but um i'm also skeptical about a new uh new york times um uh, article here um they it dropped last night i guess or dropped maybe it was on saturday i don't know if you saw this a four decade secret one man story of sabotaging carter's re-election Oh, a prominent yeah. Texas politician said he unwittingly took in a 1980 tour of the Middle East with a clandestine agenda. <laughs> okay. So I, I looked at this, Andrew. Have, have you seen this story? Yeah, it was it was meticulously reported. I mean, it, it came across as pretty uh, pretty credible that Peter Baker, uh, I don't know him at all, but uh, boy, he he was trying to reach everybody and getting their comment on that. Well, I'll get back to that in just a second. So I got as far as the first sentence, right? It has been more than four decades, but Ben Barnes says he remembers it vividly. <laughs> and as soon as I read that, I went, wait a minute. Is this the same Ben Barnes that was fronting the uh, Rathergate Texas Air National Guard story in 2004? No. And sure as shit. <laughs> oh, if scroll, no. If you scroll all the way down, all the way down to Peter Baker's at the end of Peter Baker's, or not quite all the way down, but uh, down in, uh, well, hang on. I'm, I'm going to find this. It's, what it's, a memory you have, Edward. Well, I mean, we, we, <laughs> we had uh, a lot of, um, we had a lot of um, dealings on this. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to find out where in the story this was here. Uh, and by the way, this is a, this is a while I'm looking for. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Here it was. I just went. It just went past me. Um, it says Mr. Barnes is no is no shady foreign arms dealer with questionable credibility, <laughs> like some of the characters who fueled previous iterations of the October surprise theory. He was once one of the most prominent figures in Texas, the youngest speaker of the Texas House of Representatives, and later lieutenant governor. He was such an influential figure that he helped a young George W. Bush get into the Texas Air National Guard rather than be exposed to the draft. Now, this is something <laughs> that this was part of the Rathergate story. There is no evidence that Ben Barnes helped him get anywhere. George H.W. Bush denied it at the time. George W. Bush denied it at the time. Um, George W. Bush volunteered for the National Guard. You can question his motives, but at least he served. And his unit could have been transferred to Vietnam. It wasn't as though that never that that, that type of thing didn't happen. Yeah, he was flying F one hundred fours. I think He's flying F one hundred fours, and um, and those types of units often did go to Vietnam. His didn't, but it wasn't as though there was some reason why that was a safe haven. Um, right. You know, Joe Biden's deferments were actually a lot safer in that <laughs> in that sense than George W. Bush's Texas Air National Guard service. Now, Peter Baker just repeats Barnes's allegation as um, fact. And in the very next paragraph <laughs> after that, it says, confirming Mr. Barnes's account is problematic after, after so much time. Mr. Connolly, Mr. Casey, and other central figures have long since died, and Mr. Barnes has no diaries or memos to corroborate his account. 
But he has no obvious reason to make up the story and indeed expressed trepidation in going public because of the reaction of fellow Democrats. Well, yeah, this is a guy yeah. who likes to make shit up. And <laughs> <laughs> you have a unique way of say, putting things, but you're dead on. I mean, how do you how do you treat a guy who was one of the sources for CBS News's worst um, credibility debacle, I think, in its history, <laughs> and treat him like he's some sort of a credible source? The guy was a the guy was a Democrat. You know, he says, well, he was working for his mentor John Connolly, who was you know had just become a Republican, which is true. He was work he would become a Republican in the 1980, 1979-1980-ish thing because he wanted to run for president, but you know that didn't didn't pan out but <laughs> barnes was a democrat he was a democrat then <laughs> if if he discovered that somehow this was a setup by the reagan administration why did it take him 43 years to tell this <laughs> i mean we've been talking they've been making this accusation about october surprise reagan was working with iran to keep the hostages jimmy carter never had a chance blah 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 this thing has been floating around since the 1980 election this theory has been floating around ever since it's not like oh you know 43 years later we, all of a sudden hey nobody thought of this and yeah. then ben Parker goes well yeah okay yeah you know i i have to say i was part of it nonsense they've been talking about it since 1980 since especially since 1981 when iran released the hostage released the hostages after reagan took office a few minutes after he took office yeah and <laughs> and ben barnes who's a democrat <laughs> waits 43 years to tell this story <laughs> and peter baker in the new york times swallowed this thing whole. whole i mean whole well they sure packaged it well oh sure <laughs> well the Jeez. new york Times packages New York Times knows how to package things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, wow. honestly, it's the first thing that I thought of. It's like, <laughs> Ben. Bowles, you know, I, 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 that went right by me when I read that. I must have been tired. Wow, Ed, you, you nailed it again. And and one of the things about Ben Barnes is that he had a reputation for bullshitting people, right? And he was he had tried to fight to to salvage the credibility of the whole Texas Air National Guard story when it became clear that the memos had been typed on a modern computer, not a not a you know a, a Texas Air National Guard typewriter, um, <clears throat> because apparently Ben Barnes didn't know how to use or whoever it was didn't know how to use uh, Microsoft and use a typewriter font in it. <laughs> So he's the one who kind of came up with the story that, oh, well, this came from somebody named Lucy Ramirez who, who, who transcribed the memos and, and, and torched the originals because they didn't want it traced back to the source. Yeah, right, right. This is the same guy. <laughs> and people wonder why we don't trust the media. <laughs> yeah, they, well, they shouldn't. I, oh, my gosh. He has that no is... obvious reason to make up the story. That's that's apparently now the standard of proof at the New York Times. So here's my Jeez. question. Here's my question. This is this is stunning, Ed. I did not realize this. I completely missed it. Well, here's my question for you. When you were at the New York Times, yeah. if you had brought if you had brought a blockbuster expose to your editor at the time, you don't need to et name editors here. I'm just gonna say your editor at the time. Well, there's it, a couple I'd like to, but go ahead. Well, I mean, you you can feel free. I'm just saying. You oh, I know, I know. Um, and you would, and and it it proposed that there was this huge government conspiracy and malfeasance to to uh, torpedo a sitting president's uh, election um, re-election campaign. And they said, "Well, what's your sourcing?" And you had said, "I've got one guy who's got absolutely no corroborative evidence, but he's got a <laughs> <to> lie." <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know i'm trying to think when they did the pentagon papers they had ellsberg but i don't know that they had anybody else well yeah that's i mean it's a good point I, I, maybe ellsberg showed them the paper well, they had a lot of they had a ton of documentation yeah i mean yeah. he had the evidence for it right 
you could, I mean, they could yeah. have debated right. whether or not that was legitimate. I don't, and I think at the time, nobody would have thought that Ellsberg would have typed this up on a Microsoft office. Right. No, <laughs> and, no. And got the font it was, off. it was, it was so secret that they took people, well, Neil Sheehan and Al Siegel and a couple of other people, and they set them up in a, a couple of hotel rooms at the Hilton in Manhattan, and nobody could talk about it. Uh, they just disappeared for some months, as I recall. Uh, and uh, wow. Well, geez. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't get over it, Ed. That's, that's, that's a good one. That's, that's the story of the week here. I, I honestly could not get over that either. I mean, honestly, I was looking at that and saying, this this can't be the same Ben Barnes. And I kept scrolling down. I think I actually did it like a, a search on, um, um, you know, on, on the article to see if, I, if there was anything about Texas Air National Guard. And sure enough, that's where it popped up. Uh, it's like, you got to be kidding me, man. <laughs> Google something every once in a while, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Well, so, I didn't write about that because I was I was still getting back in the swing of things. And honestly, it's well, one of you those can still write about it. I mean, that, I if, they're, if they're waiting 43 years, <laughs> you could wait four or three days. <laughs> yeah, I, I might write something about this tomorrow just as a, a as a wraparound for today's podcast. Uh, because I think it's, I guess I think it's worth noting. Oh it's, yeah, absolutely. It's it. I, I'm I'm stunned by it, but and you digging it up, but I'm also stunned by that I com went right over my head. I missed that completely. Jeez. Well, see, you and I we're 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 a team. That's that's, that's yeah, team. that's right, that's right, Ed. Thank goodness you're on the ball, and and I'm just the and I'm just the. Um, the um, the other old guy in the balcony that's not at, that is not at all true that is not at all true. <laughs> because we're going to get into something that um that um andrew actually his podcast is on the same topic here uh, uh malcolm on the right episode 53 more bad news for bias media if they want to survive now i think that the, i think that that story is a perfect lead <laughs> for yeah. your boy for your, i guess it is <laughs> yeah it is awesome. well they they did a poll and they found that only 25% of people believe what they see in the media. And half the people think it's made up to serve the agenda of the reporters. Um, actually, honestly, I'm 50% seems a little low, but uh, it to me, to my eyes, but it. It's very disturbing, but it, not just because we like to bash the media, because the media likes to bash us, but it's disturbing because a properly functioning democracy needs a reliable, trusted source of news, uh, yep. of common, common facts that, that, that they can debate honestly disagree about and whatever but debate honestly and we are getting from the mainstream media we're getting a stream of carefully selected facts some of them made up actually uh and act acting as if that is the, the basic narrative so the argument then becomes not about the any particular issue it becomes about your lying no, we're not. You're lying, and it's we get nowhere. Yeah, it's a it's a serious cost for us uh, in this country, and there are other subjects like it, like the woke thing that's dismissing American history, and uh, uh, it that is uh, corroding the commonly accepted foundation, the intellectual foundation of the country. Yep. Uh, and if kids aren't learning about, I mean, gee, gee, who is that Ronald Reagan? If kids aren't learning the history of the country and, and what we came through and how we've worked to perfect it, not there, never will be, but how we've made this country better, um, then when it's challenged, 
we have a weak response. We will have a weak response. Maybe not in my lifetime, but there will be a weak response to defending the country that to them it was given to them. And you and I know, Ed, as well as anybody, that things you get for free are not carefully valued. Nope, not at all. And um, and that's one of the reasons why we we love our VIP and VIP Gold members. We do we do produce this one free because we've been doing this for for many many years. Um, and uh, we kind of want a a the broader broader audience for for this version of the podcast. But it's not because uh, it's not because it's not valuable. It's because Andrew is uh, really in demand for VIP stuff over at Red State. So I want to make sure that people get a chance to see Andrew and 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 hear what he has to say and go back to Red State and take a look at some of his VIP content. And so now I agree uh, with you. I appreciate that. That's uh, the, the they are Hot Air and Red State. Well, of course, there's a bunch of other sites, but Hot Air and Red State are wonderfully uh, comparable in um in the in the content for conservatives i mean you get stuff at both of them that you never get anywhere else uh, yep. and it's so it's uh it's so satisfying for me to, to to work at one of them well i guess both of them now in a way um that uh uh that getting the message out and that's why vip is important because uh they have censored social media so we're um uh, they're not town hall and, and the other sites are not, they don't get the traffic from social media because they're being censored. Uh, and so they're trying to smother it through revenue, but, or lack of revenue, but uh, right. VIP carries it along. So yep. thank you to the VIP subscribers and uh, sign up yep. more. What is it? Uh, be sure you suppress this widely. <laughs> <laughs> A big salute to our VIP members. Thank you so much for what you do. And by the way, um, we don't have a lot of time left here, but Andrew does have another VIP column, written VIP column. Putin owns Biden after his empty response to drone downing uh, invites more. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, the the um, insult not, you know, not responded to always incentivizes more insults. Um, yeah, you know, Trump believes that you have to punch back on everything. You don't. But what? How did we react to the Chinese balloon? Nothing. We, we, we waited. Let, yeah. It was done. We waited until yeah, its mission. We wait, let it finish it its mission. Let it let it finish its mission of surveying, uh, surveilling, and then send its stuff up to the satellite, and then we shot it down. Big deal. So uh, what? Po what Putin did was they dispatched their uh, two uh, fighters, uh, and they buzzed it. They buzzed the uh, the drone flying over the Black Sea, took off from Romania. And what it does is it collects intel on uh, Russian military movements in Ukraine and passes them on to Ukraine. Uh, it's over international waters in international airspace. And uh, the Russians didn't shoot it down. They flew over it, dumped jet fuel on it, followed the motor and uh, the... Uh, Air Force techs flying it decided it couldn't make it home, so they scrubbed the memory and crashed it in about 4,000 feet of water, and within hours, the Russians were there trying to get it back. This is not uncommon in international incidents. The U.S. raised, uh, back in the 80s or 70s, uh, raised part of a, a Soviet submarine in the Pacific from three miles down. The CIA did it in a cloak and dagger operation. And uh, so these kinds of things happen, but the response was nothing. He never sent an angry message. They called the Russian ambassador in Washington. He came to the State Department, they scolded him, and he left. You know, I mean, it, it's nothing. It's, it's kind of like woke diplomacy, you know? I mean, everybody gets a trophy, nobody's feelings get hurt. And uh, I don't know what Biden's afraid of. He could have uh, thrown a dozen or two Russian diplomats out of the country. The Russians would have responded. So maybe uh, Biden didn't want to do that. And so Putin gets away with it. The way he got away with annexing two provinces of Georgia in 2008, the way he got away with annexing Crimea in 2014, and the way if they get uh, 
some kind of a truce now, the way he'll get away with annexing part of Eastern Ukraine. Uh, and they don't stop these guys. These aggressors don't stop. Hitler didn't stop. Others didn't stop. Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, they don't stop until they are stopped. Uh, and uh, that's why I support uh, helping Ukraine. But uh, to back down like this and just kind of like, oh, well, okay. And now a word came out after the drone downing that the Pentagon was considering reconsidering these operations because uh, it was uh, dangerous. Oh, oh, oh. So you're going to scare us out of doing helping our allies. So it worked. Yep. You know, I mean, that's the way bullies work. They they count on you being afraid to retaliate because it might escalate things. I had one personal experience with a bully in school. I was scared to death. I did respond uh, and he backed off and it turned out, but I could have gotten my face pounded in. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes that happens too. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my dad, I told my dad, this guy is bullying me in the playground. And he said, well, you know, he didn't rush into the school and all that stuff. He just said, well, you have to work it out yourself and you may have to stand up to him at some point. And um, soon after he did, and I, I was a spur of the moment thing. I punched him in the throat <laughs> and, and he coughed and he was, uh, couldn't breathe for a minute and he went away and he was, the air came out of the balloon and all the kids on the playground saw the guy was empty. Well, that's nothing brave on my part. I was scared to death, but this is how you have to respond to bullies, even if they're countries. Uh, and um, so once again, uh, testing Biden, he didn't come through. Uh, and guess what? Then uh, the next uh, the next weekend, here comes the president of China for life to visit the president of Russia for life. Uh, and uh, China is considering its own invasion, unprovoked invasion of Taiwan in the future. So now they know this uh, Biden saying he's going to respond could well be bunk. And it may tempt him into doing something stupid. Yep. Little, little stupid things turn out to be historic. You know, when, they, when we landed at D-Day, they didn't wake up Hitler because he was up most of the night. Had they wakened him up in the morning and told him, he could have ordered the panzers in. But the Germans are like the Russians. They, they have to wait for the higher command to tell them what to do. So the panzers are waiting and waiting until lunchtime when Hitler wakes up and he says, oh, you better move the panzers in. But it's too late. Well, there were too many Americans on shore. He, start, he started them. But then don't forget, he reversed that order and was insisting that the actual invasion was going to be at the Pas de Calais. Yeah, they, well, we uh, the ruse the ruse on that worked. Yeah, um, uh, and uh, uh, it's just little things like the Battle of Waterloo. They didn't wake up Napoleon because he had kidney stones during the night and he was tired, so he launched his attack at Waterloo late. But that late, that being tardy on the attack, allowed the Prussians, General Blucher, to show up in time to save the battle. So these little things really matter and they don't maybe at the time, but, uh, but they yeah. do. And that's why we need to learn history to learn these things. Little things matter. Yep. Indeed. And, and by the way, we were, I don't want to get into this cause we're already running along here. We do have to get to jokes because we promised yes. them time. Um, but, um, and I've got a couple for you. Um, oh, good. But, uh, but today is the 20th anniversary of the launch of the Iraq war. And there's oh, been some pretty good retrospectives on that, you know, about about cakewalks um, and that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, I think it's I think it's healthy to have those debates. I, I think I think the problem with the Iraq war wasn't the fact that it wasn't a cakewalk. It fairly much was in the phase that we were yeah. launching. The problem is, is that once we realized that we'd broken everything, <laughs> couldn't just leave. And we end up stuck there for 20 years. And Afghanistan is much the same way. And, and we're still like, there and will be for a long time. Of course, we've been in Korea a long time, too. And right. even if they get a truce in Ukraine, guess what, Ed? <laughs> it, it, it's it, a it, truce it, in Korea. There yeah, never has it, been a, a settlement there. 
Yeah, it'll be a it'll be a truce that's guaranteed by NATO troops, which means Americans will be on the ground in any sort of truce in Ukraine, and uh, it'll be a tripwire sort of effect, the same way that we have in on the Korean Peninsula. You're exactly correct, and that's the 20th and 21st century for you folks. Yeah. <laughs> that's that seems to be the the direction we're going in, but. Uh, rather than get any more depressing, we've got to get to the jokes of the week. Andrew's got some. I've got some. Oh, good. Go ahead. All right. I'll go first. We can go back and forth on this. This is These are courtesy of the Reader's Digest, which has some jokes online. I discovered this, right? So a, a man walks into the local FBI office and he says, I just want you to know that my talking parrot has disappeared. And the FBI agent at the desk says, why did you come here? Go to go to your local police department. And he says, I will, I will. I'm just here to tell you that that whatever that parrot says, he's a goddamn liar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got one similar to that. Okay. Uh, there's a sign is uh outside of bar it says a talking dog for sale. And the guy, guy goes in and and he says, What? What do you have a talking and says, yeah, he's in the courtyard. And he says, oh, I want you to try this 10 bucks. Why? He says, because he's old. And he says, well, so he goes in the courtyard and he talks to the dog and the dog starts telling him about being a CIA spy dog and uh, in Iraq. And uh, they, they sent him in and he hung around Saddam Hussein and listened to all the details. Then he came out and and told his handlers and they passed it on. Uh, and the guy is amazed and he goes back in the bar to pay the guy 10 bucks for the talking dog. He says, it's amazing. He, 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 he really does talk. And the bartender says, yeah, I know, but he makes shit up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got another one here for you. Okay. What's the difference between capitalism and socialism? This is a big question these days, right? What's the difference between capitalism and socialism? Okay. Uh, go ahead. In a capitalist society, man exploits man. And in a socialist society, it's the other way around. <laughs> I like that one. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. And I have one more. Um, okay. The uh, AMC, this is Seth Meyers, AMC, the world's largest theater chain, lost billions of dollars in a theater closure during the pandemic. But experts say it could take up to 10 large popcorns to make it back. <laughs> just 10, huh? Yeah, yeah. I just on eight. I would have yeah. thought, eight, yes. Uh, you know, we used to go to the movies a lot. It was Regal Chain in California before the pandemic. and. I go up and I, oh, I have to have popcorn at a movie theater, Look. and and I would go up, but it was it was like twice to get popcorn and a drink was like twice the price of a ticket. I said, well, well, never mind. Jeez. All right, last one here. It's a short one. Two guys stole a calendar. They got six months each. <laughs> okay, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I got one other one. That, I got one that's right. going around on Instagram. And is the guy who is very, the funniest thing is the guy who's telling the joke because he can't control himself. He's laughing so hard. It's a dad joke. And he says, uh, did you know the, the people in Dubai don't believe in the Flintstone, Flintstones, but the people in Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Uh, anyway, All that's right. enough for the week. We've put people through enough. I think so. I, th I think that, I think this may have made, may have made the week worse, especially my last joke may have made the week worse. So we're going to quit while we're behind. In the meantime, go to Twitter <laughs> to, find, to find the Prince of Twitter at a H Malcolm, the region of red state.com. And you can find links to all of his stuff there. Andrew, thanks so much for being with us today. We will talk again next week. Thank you, Edward. Thanks everybody. See you then. Now that the political infighting is over and the sausage is being made in the House, it's time for Republicans to unite with one cause, 
and fight back against Joe Biden and his radical administration. The GOP has promised to investigate Biden, family corruption, the border, big tech censorship, collusion, the origins of COVID, the FBI, and intel agencies' attacks on the American people and more, and it's time to hold them to those promises. Here at Hot Air, we won't let up on holding them accountable. We unapologetically fight back against the radical left and squishy rhinos in Congress who fail the people. We bring you the truth and go to war against Biden's woke communist agenda. But we need your help. By becoming a VIP for uh, hotair.com, you can help us in this battle for our country. Just look at the House Democrats leader, Hakeem Jeffries. He's another divisive, radical leftist, and his communist Sesame Street speech proves it. If Republicans don't halt the Biden agenda and conservative media fails to hold them accountable, it could mean the end of our great country. Join us in the fight. Become a Hot Air VIP member or a VIP Gold member today and use the promo code SAVEAMERICA to receive a 40% discount on your membership. Stand with us and fight to save America. We will never give up. And thank you very much.